Greetings from Bronxville in 2021. Today's topic is the House of Fabergé. Rumor has it that in 2014, an anonymous buyer purchased a Fabergé Easter egg at a Christie's auction for a whopping $33 million. Made entirely of gold and encrusted with diamonds and sapphires, the egg surprises you with a stunning washeron Constantine watch when you open it. It was made for the imperial family of Russia in 1887 and accidentally found by a metal scrap dealer in a flea market in the US all these years later. The lucky dealer bought it at its metal value, $500, from the clueless owner and only later discovered its true value when he googled gold egg and washer on watch. Another two eggs from this collection are still missing. So look out for those treasures next time you visit a flea market. In total, the House of Fabergé made 52 imperial and 19 other bejeweled Easter eggs during the time of the company's operation. So total 71, not so many. The tradition was conceived when the first egg was commissioned by the Tsar, Alexander III in 1885 as an Easter gift for his wife, Empress Maria Fyodorovna. This original Fabergé egg, now called the hen egg, was composed of solid gold and coated with white enamel to appear it like an egg. Inside the white egg was a gold yolk which held a gold hen with ruby eyes. Within the hen's tail feather was a mini gold and diamond imperial crown and a ruby pendant. The surprise element of this exquisite egg delighted the empress and from then on the Tsar ordered an egg for each Easter with the only request being that each egg had to reveal a surprise. Tsar Nicholas II was particularly fond of this beautiful tradition and gave his German wife, Alexandra, or Alex as he lovingly referred to her, several precious Fabergé eggs over the years. The surprising egg gifts ranged from miniature trains and palace replicas to pieces of jewelry and animal sculptures, all made of most luxurious materials and a masterpiece in their own right. Some of these egg yolks are thought to be even more valuable than the egg itself because of the exquisite designs and their unsurpassing quality of craftsmanship. Take, for example, the incredible miniature replica of the first Trans-Siberian railway train that was made in 1900 for Tsar Nicholas II, who presented it to Alexandra, now on display in, Krom in the Kremlin. The exterior of the egg is made of onyx, silver, gold, and quartz, and is decorated with colored virtuous animal. Inside, the five carriages of the train are made of gold and feature rock crystal windows, while the engine is made of platinum with a miniature mechanism inside which sets the train in motion. The train has a gold key that can be used to wind it up and make it run and has a diamond headlight and ruby marker lights. While Fabergé eggs are probably what the firm is most remembered for today, the House of Fabergé specialized in jewelry, hardstone sculptures, photograph frames, decorative gold and silver boxes, desk sets, timepieces, doorbells, and other ornamental objects. 
founded in 1842 in Russia by Gustav Fabergé, the first Fabergé store opened in a basement of an uh, unassuming house in St. Petersburg. It was not until the end of the century, however, when the jewelry firm acquired its cult status. Gustav's son, Carl Fabergé, who worked at the Hermitage Museum, produced a replica of a 4th century BC gold bangle for the Pan-Russian exhibition in Moscow. When Tsar Alexander III saw the replica at the exhibition, he declared that uh, that he could not distinguish Fabergé's work from the original. He ordered that specimens of work by the House of Fabergé should be displayed in the Hermitage Museum as examples of superb contemporary Russian craftsmanship. In 1885, the House of Fabergé was bestowed with the coveted title, title Goldsmith by special appointment to the imperial crown, beginning an association with the Russian Tsars. This skyrocketed the reputation of the brand and made it to what it is today. Today, Fabergé masterpieces are legendary and revered around the world. In 1983, Jim Fabergé pieces were featured in movies. In the James Bond movie, Acta Pussy, a Fabergé egg is the central object of the plot. And in 2004, the movie Ocean's 12, uh, George Clooney and crew compete with another thief to steal a Fabergé egg from a European museum. In 2004, billionaire Malcolm Forbes was set to auction his nine Fabergé eggs and 180 other Fabergé pieces at Christie's, but Ukrainian-Russian oligarch Viktor Bexelberg swooped in to purchase the entire collection before the public sale, allegedly spending about a hundred million dollars for it. In addition, Wechselberg acquired six other Fabergé eggs and opened the Fabergé Museum in St. Petersburg in, in 2016. If you would like to find out more about Fabergé masterpieces, I encourage you to visit the online Fabergé exhibition at the Virginia Museum of Fine Art clicking on the link below this post. I had the privilege of visiting the museum, which holds the largest collection of Fabergé eggs and other Fabergé works outside of Russia in January and was very impressed with their collection. The museum has developed a great online exhibition to make their masterworks accessible to people around the world during COVID, and this is a great opportunity to see the items. I wish you a great time discovering this exquisite collection of Fabergé works. Stay safe and keep exploring. See you next time.